Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I wanted to continue my uh, legend series, uh, and today I am putting Sir Ian Bodham uh, of England. His full name was uh, Ian Terence uh, Bodham. He was born on twenty fourth of November, nineteen fifty five. Uh, his nickname was uh, Beefy. I've heard uh, many fellow commentators call him that as well. Uh, and he played for England, obviously mainly, and he played for Somerset. That's where he made friends with uh, Sir Vivian Richards. So I've said that uh, in one of my video that uh, Sir Vivian Richards is the godfather of uh, Ian Botham's son. He also played for Worcestershire, uh, Durham, and also for Queensland in uh, Australia. And uh, Ian Botham is uh, considered as uh, one of the greatest uh, all-rounders uh, the game has ever seen. He has played uh, in 102 test matches and he scored 5,200 runs. Uh, he scored 14 centuries and his highest score was uh, 208. And bowling-wise, uh, he took uh, 383 wickets uh, with 27 five-wicket hauls and uh, four ten-wicket per match. And in first-class cricket, I mean, uh, Ian Botham has scored close to 20,000 runs with 38 hundreds. And he has taken uh, 1,172 wickets as well. And in uh, one-day cricket, uh, he played around 100 so matches and he scored 2,000-something runs and 145 wickets. Uh, it, well, it really didn't get into one-day cricket much, but test cricket, uh, he was an absolute legend. And uh, Ian Botham uh, is the only player, uh, is the first, sorry, not the only player, he was the first player in test history to score a century and also take 10 wickets in the same test match. And that happened in 1980 against India at Wangade Stadium. Uh, Botham scored 114 uh, and he also took uh, 13 wickets in that test match. That has only been done uh, four times. Alan Davidson is the one who did it first time for Australia, but it was 100 runs together in a test match, not a century, and 10 wickets. And Ian Botham, the first one to do that. And then Imran Khan did that. And then Shakib ul Hassan also did that. So only four people have ever done that. And uh, what made uh, Imran, uh, Ian both, I mean, towards the end, I mean, uh, he had a little bit of injury and uh, he had uh, problems with the pace reduced. And he was mainly a very good swing bowler. He used to swing the ball uh, very well. And that's how he used to take a lot, lot of wickets. And... Um, in that uh, first uh, five uh, years that Ian Botham played uh, without being the captain, he actually scored 2,557 runs at an average of 49.17. And he took 196 wickets at an average of uh, 21.18. And I mean, those are amazing figures because I mean, on those figures, you could make a test team just as a batsman alone or as a bowler alone. I mean, that's how great uh, Ian Botham was. I mean, the first five years, the statistics that I just gave you. Uh, but later on with the injury, I mean, the statistics uh, reduced, uh, his numbers reduced a bit, but he was uh, still a great, great all-rounder. And by the way, Ian Botham, I mean, from 1986 uh, August uh, to November 1998, uh, 12th November, I think, he held the world record for the most number of test wickets, uh, 383 wickets that Ian Botham took. Uh, that was the uh, highest uh, uh, number of wickets that was taken in test cricket. At that point, it wasn't 383. I mean, he didn't finish his career then. And his uh, span was 1976 to 1992 is, was uh, Ian Botham's uh, international uh, span. And uh, Dennis Lilly was the one who had the world record with 355 test match wickets. Uh, it's a, a number that I'll never forget. And Ian Botham is the one who broke that record. Uh, and then uh, Richard, Sir Richard Hadley then broke uh, Ian Botham. And Sir Richard Hadley's uh, record was obviously broken by a couple of as well. Ian Botham's uh, final tally wickets was 383. Uh, Dennis Lilly was 355 and Sir Richard Hadley was uh, 431 as a lot of people will remember. And another thing, uh, the, the, the massive, the greatest achievement of Ian Botham, that amazing once in a lifetime thing happened in that 1981 Ashes, it's an amazing story. I've read a lot about it as a youngster. In the 1981 Ashes, uh, uh, when Australia toured England, uh, Ian Botham was the captain of the England team.
sorry and the first test australia won by four wickets and the second test it was a, a drawn match it was at lords and uh, ian botham was uh, out for a duck in both the innings in the first innings and in the second innings he was out for a duck and he resigned the captaincy uh, of the english team and in the third test at headingley he took six wickets in the first innings of australia and scored 50 in the first innings uh batting and in the second innings uh, england were following on uh, that test match i mean australia asked england to follow on because of the uh, 200 plus deficit and uh, following on uh, ian botham scored 149 not out as well and uh, england margin uh, won that uh, uh, test match by uh, 18 runs and that was a close win and uh, ian botham was the man of the match so he took six wickets in the australian first innings 50 in the first innings batting and 149 not out uh, when they were following on uh, man of the match uh, first uh, match man of the match after uh, resigning as captain and the fourth match uh, was at uh, edgbaston and uh, uh, he took uh, five wickets uh, for one run in 28 balls uh, in 28 balls there was a span of 28 balls at ian botham bowl he considered only one run and he took five wickets and uh, england won that uh, match by 29 runs and that was also a match it was a strange test match where uh, 787 runs were scored in that test match i mean the all the four innings together australia's two innings and england's two innings and not a single 50 was scored in that match 787 runs scored in the test match shows how difficult it was to bat and the pitch i mean some there are some pitches where you are not, no matter how long you bat in the next ball can always be your last ball and english wickets are like that with a lot of assistance for fast bowlers So Ian Botham was a man of the match in that uh, fourth test match as well. So that is two man of the match in the row, uh, in in a row. Uh, he took five wickets, uh, repeating five wickets for just one run in 28 balls. And then in the fifth test match at Manchester, uh, he again scored a hundred, hundred and eighteen runs. Uh, Botham scored, and he took uh, five wickets in both the innings together. And he was again the man of the match, and England won that match by 103 runs. So. uh and it was a, the sixth test was a drawn match uh, and both of them took wickets in that uh, match as well so uh, the first test australia won the second test match uh, it was a draw so after two matches australia were leading 1-0 and the third test match australia were in the driver seat uh, following asking england to follow on and then england uh, that one four and not out and england win the third match and the fourth test match and the fifth test match and three uh, test matches in a row so ian botham was the man of the match i don't think that has ever happened i have never seen that happen any time in my life and i don't think it has ever happened and uh, england eventually won the test series 3-1 that was one of the greatest turnarounds in a test history and especially in the ashes and uh, ian botham scored 399 runs uh, in that series for england being the top scorer for top run getter for england in that series and he also took 34 wickets uh being the uh, highest wicket taker for england in a team where bob willis was also playing so imagine that i mean he's the highest test uh, the highest run scorer and the highest wicket taker in the test series uh, 399 runs and 34 ma- uh, wickets that is what you call a genuine all rounder i mean a lot of uh, players uh, talk uh, these days when you say all rounder sometimes we talk about all rounders like bits and pieces all rounders uh, someone who is a batsman who can bowl a bit or a bowler who can bat a bit but sir ian botham was an absolute genuine genuine all rounder i've always said that the greatest uh, all rounder that has played was sir garfield sobers but sir ian botham is uh, probably the second after sir garfield sobers in my book because that uh, 81 series he turned it around with bat and ball i mean a genuine all rounder is someone who can win a test match with the bat and the ball and that is what Sir Ian Botham did I mean amazing turnaround in that 1981 series he made it himself uh, again just repeating uh, remember he was a captain he got uh, d- two ducks uh, first innings and second innings duck at lords and then he resigned the captaincy and then three man of the match performances together two centuries and a few five wicket hauls and that one where he took five wickets uh, for one run in 28 balls and uh, Sir Ian Botham was also a very good football player he has played professional football he played in the football league he made 11 appearances 
in the football league for the Scunthorpe, uh, Scunthorpe uh, United team. Uh, and uh, uh, so he also is a very uh, vivid uh, golf uh, player. He loves uh, his golf as well. So that is my uh, video on uh, Sir Ian Botham, one of the finest, finest all-rounders the game has ever seen. I would say the second best all-rounder after uh, Sir Garfield Sobers. Uh, but at that time, there was a lot of all-rounders, Imran Khan, Kapil Dev, even Sir Richard Hadley. Uh, so there were a lot of good all-rounders in that era. Anyway, that is my uh, preview. Uh, sorry, my uh, video for Sir Ian Botham. I forgot to show you the book. I've said in one of my videos that I had that book all about cricket where I had the pictures of the old cricket bats that it was Q and even the field position in the Bodyland series uh, when uh, Lawwood was bowling. I have that book now and I will show you. I wanted to show yesterday and even today, but I forgot. I will show it in my next video. I'll show the pictures of it as well. Anyway, that is my video for one of the greatest cricketers the world has ever seen, Sir Ian Botham. Uh, and I was lucky enough to watch him play live uh, many times in the late 80s, uh, early 90s. Ian Botham was still playing. Uh, so every, I hope everyone enjoys it. Uh, please uh, do give your comments uh, and what you felt about Ian Botham in your comment column. Thank you very much. Uh, take care and God bless you.